You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Although Hidden Traps is not officially released until August 1st, you can pre-order your paperback or ebook copy now from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. Here's George Foreman with Invent Health. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at Invent Help. Call Invent Help today for free information. Invent Help has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. Invent Help can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call Invent Help today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put Invent Help in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. 
plus. Call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rain. Welcome to Foo Bar, one nation under Foo, and I am your host, the Foo, of course, and we are coming to you live from Foo Studios. How many times can we say Foo in one sentence? We should keep trying that out. We are here on KLRNRadio.com, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, welcome back, guys. Thanks for being here again. Can you believe it? We've made it a month. I've been doing this again for a month. I should go in for some therapy because I can't believe I'm still doing this. You know, actually, when you talk about how long you've been doing radio and you're a conservative and you look back at all the crazy stuff you've talked about, um, you you really got to wonder if this is therapy, that you guys are my psychiatrists. So lucky you, you get to listen to me Babylon for the next hour about craziness. And oh, my God. You know, I say this every week. It has been a crazy week. It has been a crazy week. I tell you what. Between Donald Trump attacking Jeff Sessions nonstop, (laughs) Trump announcing some crazy ban on trans, and John McCain becoming a target for the left and people wishing death on the guy, it's been a crazy week, and it's Wednesday. You know, I was looking at my my Twitter feed today, and um, after I was done vomiting profusely and and saying a prayer for my possessed (laughs) timeline, I realize that it's probably only going to get worse because this is how it works. You know, in 2016, we're like, oh, my God, 2016 is like the devil. Please go away. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I knew 2017 probably wasn't going to get much better. But holy crap, you guys. Holy crap. Yeah, I got to talk a little bit about John McCain. You know, and I shared this yesterday in some kind of tweet storm because I was so sick and tired of the media and the left and Democrats deliberately lying about what John McCain had done. So I went on this tweet storm, and and I have some history with John McCain. Uh, Believe it or not, um, when I first started actually tweeting in 2013, uh, this was after I had joined in 2009 and despised it so much that I left and didn't come back until Facebook decided to ban me for 30 days. So I, you know, I needed some way to go yip yap. So I went to Twitter, um, but I first started and I was kind of finding my groove and I was being a pain in the butt. And it was about this time that McCain and Graham were saying how bloggers shouldn't have First Amendment protection, that they were wackos, and basically was attacking everything that I thought was, you know, pretty important. So you know me, I kind of went after John McCain, and I, I, you know, was like, hey, you're an idiot, whatever. And John McCain got me suspended. <laughs> he was my first Twitter suspension. You know, it's kind of like bragging about how you lost your virginity to this famous guy. Well, I lost my suspension virginity to John McCain, which is kind of creepy now that I said it out loud. But whatever. I, I did get suspended, and, and his daughter, Megan, actually blocked me, and she still has me blocked. Um, but even through all that, even <laughs> knowing he got me suspended, and I got suspended like four more times after that and almost lost my account, totally different story. Um, even after all that, I have respect for the man. And what he did after having surgery on his brain, they took a clot out of his brain. The guy got on a plane and came to vote so that they could debate a bill. That's all he did. So I went on this tweet storm. I talked about how, you know, McCain didn't really like me and I didn't like him and that was fine. But I I just really felt like we had to go out and call them out on this BS. There are Democrats out there still saying that John McCain deliberately came back just so he could kill millions of people. 
They believe this. Joy Reid, who didn't make the douchebag list, you know, spoiler. Joy Reid literally went out and said in a tweet that John McCain had voted to kill all these people. No, he didn't do that at all. All he did was say, hey, I really think we should debate something. We told Americans we would do something. Obamacare has nuked insurance and health care is really in trouble. We should find a way to fix this. Let's debate a bill. That's all he did. And even if you listen to what he said before they did all this, when he came back and they applauded and he, he did his big speech about how we shouldn't listen to radio talking heads. I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude, but whatever. Um, he even said, Joy, that he would not pass the bill as is, which means what? He didn't vote to pass anything yet. He didn't do anything. He just said we should debate a bill. Now, of course, they went on later to the evening and they weren't able to get the amendment passed that would have repealed parts of Obamacare. And that included Ted Cruz's amendment. And that kind of sucks. I mean, that kind of takes your wind out. Well, you guys can even do that. And he came for all that. Um, but man, the left deliberately was telling people that he was killing people. And it was bizarre because here's a man who has just found out he has brain cancer, and all they can do is wish horrible things on him and then say, well, you're lucky you have all this health care. You're taking our health care away from us. Some idiots were even like, well, John McCain just voted to kill me, so I hate him. There was a pastor, and he also made the douchebag list. There was a pastor who wrote an article that he hoped there was a hell for people like John McCain. For Republicans who were taking health care away. And it's beyond insane. You know, it, I, I read something back a couple months ago, and I wish I could remember who wrote it because it was brilliant. And it was basically, we've gone from a time where as a Republican, if you disagreed with a Democrat, it's like, hey, guys, we should we should talk. We disagree here. Let's figure out a way to work together to, oh, my God, you're going to kill everybody if you don't agree with us. You hate everybody if you don't agree with us. You're a racist if you don't agree with us. You're a bigot, an Islamophobe, a homophobe, a unicornophobe, whatever the newest phobe is, because you disagree with us. It has gotten to a point where it is just insanity. But you know what's even worse is you have the left up here or down here, whatever you want to call it, and they're losing their minds. And here comes the right. Hey, we're going to help you lose your minds. Like today, Donald Trump comes onto Twitter and he says, okay, my generals and I have decided no more trans in the military. Merry Christmas. And he tweets all this. I got to be honest. I am a little biased when he goes on Twitter and I don't really like what he does on Twitter. So I probably was ready to jump down his throat no matter what. But this felt like a really inappropriate way to say, hey, there's this little group of people, and we've decided that they can't serve anymore. So, okay, bye. Didn't go over well. Now, you find out later that there's nothing in the works yet to even do this, and that they have still have to figure out how they're going to do it, why they're going to do it. John McCain, speaking of McCain, is on, was it the Armed Services Committee? He's the chair, and he said, um, no, the people who are in the military who are transgendered will continue to serve, and the rest of this is under study. It was just bizarre. Why go on Twitter and do this? And according to the back of my head, I'm like, because there's something else going on. He doesn't want us paying attention. He's trying to get our attention. He's trying to get the, the media to chase their tails, which I kind of dig because they need to chase their tails. But it was bad for me. I actually had a really hard morning because I struggle with the notion that as Republicans, we would discriminate against a group of people. And so I was in this mindset that we were hurting these folks by not letting them serve in the military or saying you're not good enough to serve in the military. And there were some really wonderful vets and soldiers and troops and people who were willing to talk to a crazy bunny. Now, if you guys see me, I can be a real bitch in social media. I'm not going to say I'm not. I have a really bad habit of being snippy and kind of, you know, I get kind of smug. I own it. But our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. <laughs> something like that but they came on and they're like this is the real concern here bunny and it, it made sense when they spoke about why and the dangers of people who and not just people who are trans but people in, ge in general who have mental health issues and it finally clicked and i understood what they were saying it wasn't what trump had said like all oh, you transgenders are out of here by queers you know it was we really have to look at the mental stability of everybody including trans people 
and the military and make sure that our troops are safe. And that clicked with me. And of course, nobody thinks we should be paying for transgender surgeries or procedures. So it all gets kind of muddy in that. But we cannot, here's this crazy, right? Every day it's like, okay, the left is a little crazy and then Trump is crazier and then the left gets crazier and then the right gets crazier and nothing gets solved. It's just one big crap show after another. You know, and I, I don't mean to complain because I understand that I'm a part of that, that I help create some of this because, you know, I've been out in there in the trenches being a pain in the ass for four years and I'm not necessarily the least polarizing person out there. But it feels like it's coming to a head to me. And today, when I was so worked up about what we were doing with the transgender group in the military, all of it clicked with me that, wow, we have real problems here. And we have to figure out a way to talk about them without polarizing one another. And, you know, John McCain even talked about that in his speech. Did I like that he gave radio people a bunch of crap? No. You know, radio people kind of either they rile us up or they make us laugh or they make us think that's what they're supposed to do. But he did talk about how anymore it's more about what the right can do to foil the left and what the left can do to foil the right. And in the meantime, nothing gets done. So how do we fix it? You know, is this I also saw a tweet and it was a really smart tweet about a slippery slope with Obama. And, you know, someone said, well, you know, Obama is a really slippery slope. And then like, well, Trump's worse. He says, no, here's the deal. Trump is because of the slippery slope of Obama, that we had a divisive and horrible eight years under Obama. And now we have Trump and we have even more division, not only against left and right, but within the right and within the left. And then there's all these little categories on the left of who's the bigger victim. And then they fight each other. And it's just become one big fight. Craziness. That's all it's become is craziness. I need to take a break. When I come back, we will do this week's top 10 douchebags. So stay put. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. listening to that and I'm like what song is that I, I have no idea what that was but thank you for staying put this is the foo on foo bar one nation under foo and I just had my husband bring me a glass of water because I was not organized and did not have it in front of me before I started husbands are the best aren't they they just rock so much if you have a husband good for you um, I love mine every week he supports me and puts up with me and brings me water so here I am because of him so we we're talking earlier about craziness, right? Well, craziness always leads to douchebags. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it seems to. Um, every week here on the Foo Bar, we do what we call the top 10 douchebags. If you are new to the show, this is how it works. Basically, what we do is we go out into social media and we say, hey, guys, send us your nominations from the last week of people you think have been douchebags. And then we will go through them and pick our top 10 to make fun of, mock, and tear down during the show. Uh, basically what this does is it gives you guys an opportunity to be part of the show and makes my life a hell of a lot easier getting ready for the show. See, it works out really well and ultimately it's all about me. So on that note, here is this week's top 10 douchebags. 
At number 10 is Preston Mitchum, who is someone you probably have no idea who he is. Uh, Preston Mitchum is a gay black activist. I have to go through all the things he has listed in his bio, who decided that he was going to tweet about that all white people are racist, that all men are sexist, and that all cis normative, which I'm assuming means that you're normal, people are transphobic. Yeah, that brings us all together, doesn't it? <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of wondering, so I'm a woman and I'm white, so am I just racist or am I oppressed? You know, you always have to kind of go through this when you sort of fit into one of their little categories, but you don't exactly fit their narrative. Yeah. And, you know, it was interesting because everybody kind of came out of the woodwork on this guy and he got all bent on the shape because another conservative media outlet covered him. And he's like, well, I'm going to keep fighting. I don't care what they say. And it was ridiculous. He's ridiculous. And he's a douchebag at number 10. And speaking of ridiculous, number nine is Jack Pavlovitz. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. And I really don't care. Um, Jack is a pastor. I don't know what kind of pastor he is. But Jack decided, he's the one I was talking about earlier with McCain. He was so angry with McCain that he told people to stop praying for McCain and to pray for themselves because McCain had all this health care and screw them and McCain didn't like people and he wanted them all to die, blah, blah, blah. He also talked about an article that he had written and where he hoped there is actually a hell for so people like McCain and any Republicans who might take away health care from people have a place to go when they die. I actually did reach out to old old Jack, and I'm like, dude, you're a pastor? God, this is awful. What's the matter with you? And, you know, <laughs> he blocked me, you know, God forbid, but he did block me after I asked him what was wrong with him. Um, he did question my humanity, I and mean, I, I actually asked him, I said, you know, I'm not the one who's – who's basically asking people to go to hell because I disagree with their politics. And, and so where's that humanity key? And who do you think you are questioning my humanity? And, and that got me blocked. Good time. So he's a douchebag at number nine. Number eight is Jeff Sessions. Now, Jeff has been taking a lot of heat from Donald Trump, of course, for accusing himself with Russia. Um, but what he was nominated for was the asset forfeiture that he's been pushing, the notion that if you live in a house with someone who breaks the law, even though if you didn't break the law, they can come and take your crap. That's what they're basically doing. Asset forfeiture. You know, he also has a really big issue with legalizing marijuana. Jeff doesn't seem to think people, adults, should be making their own decisions as marijuana goes. And many people on the right don't agree with that. And so those two reasons, besides the fact the poor guy is just getting constantly battered by his boss, uh, Jeff Sessions is a douchebag at number eight. Number seven is Chelsea Manning. Oh, my God, if there is another human being, another adult on Twitter who uses that many emoji, please suspend them. Are you kidding me? So not only is Chelsea or Bradley a traitor, <laughs> not only did Chelsea or Bradley get paroled or what was it? Pardoned by Obama because he's a chick or wants to be a chick. Then today... Uh, Today, of course, you knew Chelsea Manning had to have something to say when Trump talked about banning transgenders. Uh, all Chelsea thinks that we should do is stop funding the military and take all of our money with happy little rainbows and unicorn emoji and give health care to everybody because that makes the world go around. Forget the fact that Chelsea is probably one of the main reasons that we're even having this debate about transgendered in the military anyway. Because many people believe that as long as you're physically fit, mentally capable, they really don't care what's going on in your pants. If you can be a soldier and fire a gun and protect me soldier to soldier, you're good enough to be in the military. But now, Chelsea Manning has made an issue about it. Here's Chelsea Manning, traitor to this country, <laughs> wanting us to pay for, uh, what was it, hormones and God knows what else. Chelsea basically created this debate. Chelsea basically alienated her own kind. That's why we're having this debate. So Chelsea Manning, you and your emoji are douchebags at number seven. Number six is Joy Reid. Joy is, you know, I have issues with Donald Trump. I'm very upfront about it, but he does not consume me to the point that I can't think about anything else. And I'm not so consumed with making him a bad guy that I lie or make stuff up or deliberately misreport things on my Twitter feed. You know, Joy was talking about 
all of his all of Trump's wives and was clueless about where they were from and what was Russia and Czechoslovakia and all the Vakias. And I don't pretend to understand what they are. I get totally confused, but I'm not out there on Twitter pretending I know what I'm talking about. And just so I can slam him and I don't make a fool of myself, you know, and plus she talked about universal Wi-Fi this week. <laughs> you know, Bernie Sanders is probably like, oh, you're crazy. That's insanity. So you want universal health care and universal Wi-Fi. Yeah, I don't think so, Joy. And you're a douchebag at number six. And number five is the media, because we have to have the media on our list every week because the media continues to be a giant douchebag. Say what you will about Donald Trump doing things wrong or saying things wrong. They are the real problem because he knows he could do anything he wants and they're going to flip out and then they flip out and do something even stupider. So, you know, Trump may do something awful. We don't like what Trump says. The media says something worse so Trump doesn't look as bad. And then they get all freaked out because Trump's doing okay. They have no idea that they're the ones making him look okay and (laughs) probably getting him elected again in 2020. You know, I'm sure there are lots of of different examples from this week from the media of them being specific douchebags, especially with the John McCain thing and the number of blue checkmark verified accounts who were trashing McCain and wishing death on him. But the show's only an hour long, folks. So the media, you are a douchebag at number five. At number four, speaking of media, is Deadspin. Are you guys familiar with Deadspin? You know, you're probably not. Uh, but you, if you are, you're probably familiar with them because Ted Cruz embarrassed the crap out of them a few months back. Um, that's been supposed to be reporting on sports, but suddenly, you know, they'll throw in some bizarre progressive political crap on their feed. And one night, one of their reporters or editors, whatever they call themselves, um, <laughs> she decided to tease Ted Cruz about playing basketball in college. And Ted Cruz nuked her and owned Deadspin. It became a huge mess for Deadspin. You know, one of the editors was like trying to pick a fight with Ted Cruz and then some MMA fighter named Kennedy was like, bring it all, kick your ass. It was awesome. It was so hilarious. But they got quiet for a little while after that. But then John McCain came back and Deadspin said horrible things about him. One of them basically was, I don't want to hear the name John McCain unless he does something useful like die. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing because my tweets are always better than theirs. <laughs> but they are douchebags at number four. At number three is George Takai. Oh, George, oh, Sulu. You know, I'm a Trekkie. I love Star Trek. I am a big geek. I love them so much. And I'm a Star Trek snob. I don't like the next generation. I'm not a fan of modern day Star Trek. I am a traditional Star Trek fan. I'm a Kirk, Sulu, Spock, Bones, Scotty girl. I love that show, and it hurts me to have to pick on Sulu, but Sulu, Sulu's acting like a douchebag. So, you know, Trump says, we're going to ban trans. Okay, so of course, you know, George is going to freak out, and he all but declares war on Trump. You know, you really pissed off the wrong group of people. Like, you know, we're all so scared of a, of a bunch of gay guys and transgenders, and I'm sorry, I know that sounds me, but part of me is just like, he can't be serious. You know, what are you going to do? You've pissed off the wrong group. What, you're not going to vote for us again? Boo-hoo. Oh, are you going to pick on the way we dress? I mean, yeah, I'm probably going to get yelled at when I get back on Twitter, but I just – I couldn't come up with a threat from uh, George and, and Sulu's army. It just didn't make any sense to me. Um, and you know what? He's been complaining about Donald Trump since before Donald Trump even got elected, so it's kind of hard to take him seriously on anything. So, Sulu, you're a douchebag at number three. Number two is Sean Collins. Another guy you probably don't know about. Uh, Sean is apparently some writer, and his work isn't terrible, but he's a big-ass baby on Twitter. Uh, basically, he was also wishing death on John McCain. You're, you're probably sensing a theme here. And <laughs> he said, John McCain voted to kill me today, or John McCain killed me today. And it was really dramatic crap. And, of course, you know, conservatives were all out about how can we make fun of this idiot and shame him for being an idiot? And um, it got pretty ugly for, for Sean on Twitter. So ugly, in fact, that he deleted the tweets and went on to block a bunch of people, including me. Because, you know, I couldn't help myself. I was like, dude, they voted to debate a bill. You got to get a grip. And that's all I really said. I didn't even make fun of him for being, you know, a big baby. I just said, dude, get a grip. Uh, got me blocked. So on that note alone, Sean Collins, you're a douchebag at number two. Now at number one, <laughs> yeah, this is a list of the Republicans who voted several times 
while Obama was president to do a clean repeal of Obamacare. And last night when they had the opportunity to repeal certain parts of Obamacare, they voted no. And here is the list. Capito, Heller, McCain, Portman, Alexander, Murkowski, shocker, right? And Collins. So we've got one, two, three. Yeah, we got them all. So let's go over them again. Sorry, I'm reading them so I don't screw it up. We have Mc Heller, McCain, Capito, Portman, Alexander, Murkowski, and Collins. All GOP. All people who voted yes to repeal a clean bill under Obama voted no when we had an opportunity to actually repeal parts of Obamacare. So they are douchebags at number one. Some honorable mentions. There are some weird-ass people who follow me who want to be honorary douchebags. So Patrick Batman 1793, you're an honorary douchebag. Jeff, a.k.a. Stoner Brewer, you are an honorary douchebag. And Mr. Mom at Mom1398, you're also an honorary douchebag. Okay, that's it for now, guys. I'm going to take a break. When I come back, I'll have Chad Felix Green on with me, and we'll talk politics. Stay put. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. And I'm back. Tell a friend. You know, I think 
think I've been back a month now, so we probably need to come up with like some new music. But hey, I'm just saying, and you're here on Foo Bar, One Nation Under Food. This is The Foo, and I have on the line with me the fabulous, the amazing, the wonderful, the kick-ass Chad Felix Green. Are you there, Chad? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. Oh my gosh, it is Bye. so cool to talk to you. I know. We've known each other for years in and pretend work. I've never actually even heard your voice, so this is really cool. Uh, you know, we keep it really simple. Uh, it's kind of like we're just going to sit around and, and bitch about people and drink coffee and hang out, so it really works out well. Uh, <laughs> so I'm really glad you're on, because especially with everything that's gone on today, um, if you wouldn't mind, would you tell folks a little bit about who you are and what you do and how you got involved in politics? Sure, yeah, I am. Um, I, I'm sort of known as being a you know the gay jewish conservative in my little world um yes. i discovered when i first got onto twitter in 2010 uh that i had a little bit of influence uh, that if i said if i responded to another def another conservative defending them and i said you know i'm gay and jewish then liberals would back down or they would get flustered or yeah and so people started to utilize my superpower my minority <laughs> superpower and it just kind of it just kind of stuck yeah and so uh and then i've just slowly been creeping up on twitter ever since it's become part of my daily life and uh i wrote a couple books and i was published on a bunch of websites and stuff and i've gotten people seem to like what i say for whatever reason so well, uh, no because you you know what your message and your narrative is pretty unique for being the gay jewish guy you know, the left has a bunch of gay Jewish guys or gay guys or Jewish guys. You know, they when we have someone on the right who is willing to be open about who they are and talk about politics and refuse to be part of another narrative, that's huge. That's a big deal. And so no wonder people gravitate to you. You know, I think when we first started talking, it probably was a, some argument where one of us was getting attacked. And <laughs> it's always <laughs> the same thing. Um, you're, you're really good at coming in and bringing facts. And what I've noticed especially um, is how you take down identity politics. And I think it's probably because mm -hmm. you are like the kryptonite of identity politics. Right. Yeah, it's ironic that, uh, you know, I, I am constantly pointing out that it's, you know, Chad that matters. Um, because I'm gay, because I'm Jewish, doesn't mean my, my opinion is better. Uh, but we, we, we utilize that because it's the only thing that works with the left. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, I was a disability advocate for many years, and all we always talked about that a disability does not define a person, you know, this guy's name is Bob. Well, I know you as Chad, but, you know, if you want to call yourself the gay Jewish guy, because that gets people to listen to you in this in this environment, that makes sense, which is that's kind of sad if you think about it, isn't it? It is, and it's 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 something that people put, like, onto me, and, and in my real life, I mean, that's just sort of my reality, I walk around with a funny little hat on my head, and... <laughs> Sorry. I'm everybody's, you know, I'm everybody's Jewish friend. I'm everybody's gay Jewish friend. Um, I stopped being Chad when I was 16 years old when I came out. So it's it's just a reality. Um, I joke that when I take my yarmulke off, I'm a white guy. <laughs> That's my Halloween costume. You're, you're the white guy. Off. You just take your yarmulke off and pretend like you're straight and you need to be the oh, white yeah, guy. Oh, like yeah. When I go to the gym and stuff, I, I disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. And so it's it's a reality. You know, people do treat me differently. It's just that they don't treat me badly, like the left always claims. I'm not a victim. I'm not being harassed. I don't have any rights being taken away from me. I'm not under threat of anything. And that's I, I care about truth. If the yeah. truth was Christian conservatives were attacking us all the time and trying to take my rights away, that's what I would be fighting. Sure. But I got into politics because I realized that everything that I supported as a liberal was simply untrue and mm -hmm. that innocent people were being attacked so and you were a liberal before oh my goodness i i, I was zach ford before <laughs> if it wasn't for <laughs> Ann Coulter, say that. <laughs> sorry he terrified yeah, I was, me. yeah i was i was i was sally cohen and zach ford like i i see what they say and i cringe because that's what i did in college but yeah. uh if it wasn't for ann coulter that's i would i would be on you know think progress right now with a social justice yeah. tagline. And it's interesting because um, in college, and I, this was a long time ago for me, probably longer than for you, 
Um, but I also had a moment in college where I was completely liberal. I own this. You know, I, I thought, you know, the world was going to be this great big cookie and everyone was going to give me bites of it. And then I realized when I got a job, that's not how it worked. That was my big awakening was reality. And then, you know, they ran the planes into the buildings in New York City. And that was the end of everything for me. I right. think it's fascinating that Ann Coulter was a key to you because, you know, I used to love reading her, and then with the last election, I've had kind of grown away from her. What about right. what she was saying caused you to kind of figure things out? You know, the truth is I stumbled upon one of her books when I worked at a bookstore, and uh, I read it because I wanted to see what the what the enemy was saying so I could have better arguments, and I realized that she was right, and I – yeah, you know, she's kind of got that old school confrontational snarkiness that I just love. You know, things that I, I used to love about, you know, the Kathy Griffins and all the, you know, Sarah Silverman, you know, that, that kind of aggressiveness that I enjoy. And I thought, huh, she amused me. And I couldn't counter what she was saying, even though I didn't like the way it sounded. And I realized that truth mattered more than feelings. And then I started to talk about that in college because I assumed that's what people wanted to do. They want to talk about truth. And so I would bring up topics and I would see the meltdowns and I would see everyone freaking out and I would yeah. think what's wrong with everybody. And it just slowly over time, it be, my purpose became to speak out against this nonsense. You know, and I, I think you bring up a really good point and my opinion of identity politics is it has the reverse effect of what they want it to be. You know, they pretend that they're freeing gay people, they're freeing black people, they're freeing women, but really what they're doing is they're segregating people and labeling and, and treating them like special and not equal. I, I don't understand how we get through that because, you know, like earlier today, uh, this guy was complaining that Caitlyn Jenner couldn't be one of them, you know, one of the gay people because she voted for Donald Trump and she's a Republican. And I just right. said, wait, are there no white gay people? And then, you know, it became ugly really quick, right. you know, white privilege. So I, I have a really hard time figuring out which layers of, of victimhood come first with that group. Exactly. And, and, so, and, I, know, know, and you, I know firsthand. Yeah, I know. So for you, are you a bigger victim in that group because you're Jewish or because you're gay? Uh, it depends on who you ask. The, uh, the the white supremacists don't think I'm white because mm. uh, I'm Jewish. I'm I'm the enemy. Uh, sure. Black supremacists don't think I'm Jewish. Uh, <laughs> other Jews hate me because most Jews are are liberals. Uh, of course, the gays hate me, and I can't get a date to save my life. Oh, uh, we have to work on that. There are some really cute conservative gay Jews. I'm sorry, there just are. And there has to know, be. There has to, well, and I was in the theater for a long time. I'll tell you what, there are some beautiful gay men. <laughs> there, sorry. Side note, we'll find you a dude. But you, that's a good point. You know, even in your own community, you're probably getting kind of shunned. Mm -hmm. so, it's, I, I lost all my gay friends, honestly, uh, just about all of them in, in real life uh, when I used to be political on Facebook because I would just respond to them, especially during the cake wars. Um, I... Yeah. We responded and people just blocked me. And so I realized if I want to have a social life that's not on my phone, um, I just can't talk about politics. I, I have to hide a huge part of who I am if I just want to be social with people who are like me. And I find it ridiculous. Yeah, that's really – and that's something you're hearing more and more is that people are in, are scared to admit that they're Republicans or conservatives, especially with Donald Trump. You know, um, there are people who who are physically violently angry about him. And so when you say, hey, I, I'm a Trump supporter, there are people who are literally afraid they're going to get beaten up. Right. So, you know, and I, yeah. I'm not a huge Trump supporter, so I get the frustration, but I don't get I mean, I thought Obama was awful and I made fun right. of him any chance I could. And I took digs at him all the time, but I would never, ever want to beat up an Obama supporter. I'm just I don't oh, get no. it. Oh, no. I wanted to like Obama so badly. I really did. I was so excited in 2008. Uh, I was on the cusp, just at the edge of my, my liberal world. And, and Trump, I, you know, I, I never got onto the never Trump side. I never got onto the excited Trump side. I thought he's a media clown, and, but maybe he'll get some things done, you know. And I'm not a Trump supporter. I didn't. I didn't vote for Trump. And so I'm in a. I'm always in a weird place because people make that assumption because I'm a conservative. I identify right. mostly as a Republican, although mm -hmm. I don't know why I vote for them. They never do anything. 
Yeah, you know, and it's true. It's true. They promised yeah, another option. They prom well. They're, that's kind of what it felt like this last election. It was like, well, I can vote for the Satan woman, or I can mm -hmm. vote for the guy I'm not crazy about. You know, I voted for Johnson, and because to me, he felt like the least. He was like the least likely to abuse executive authority, and plus, my 11 right. year old daughter said he seemed like the nicest one. Right. <laughs> so I mean, we really didn't have. But you're right. They had eight years and they haven't done anything. So as Republicans, beyond the identity politics, what do we do? What do you think? Exactly. And honestly, that's the problem. We can't out identity politics to the Democrats. Mm -mm. Um, that to me, our selling point, the thing that I just shout as much as possible, is that you're not a black conservative. You're not a woman voter. You are not a gay you know, citizen in that way, that on the Republican side, you actually have a chance to simply be yourself and you're not, you don't have interests that are associated with skin color or gender or any of that nonsense. The Republican side genuinely is in, in all of its hope. It's, it's the idea of freedom and liberty and constitutional rights and limited government. And the government leaves me alone. And that's universal for everybody. Yeah. And you don't – I don't need to be appealed to you as a gay person. I don't need Trump to tell me that he loves me because I am gay or Jewish or any of that. I don't need him to cater to me. I just need him to you know, sign the bill when they repeal Obamacare and stop tweeting about trannies. I just that's, <laughs> I'd like him to do that. Can yeah. I say trannies? I think I'm allowed to say trannies. You can say me. trannies. Remember, okay, so I gave you the list of words you can't say. Uh, and only I had to add a new word because I had road beer on a couple weeks ago and he dropped one before I could tell him not to. So you can saw the list you did fine. You can say trannies. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I think you bring up a great point in, in that Republicans do push the idea of freedom and liberty, but we also push the idea that you are responsible for you. And if you right. make mistakes, you have to deal with your mistakes. And I think that is our hardest selling point. But that is really the idea of freedom. Is you're really not free if I'm holding your hand and making your decisions for you. You have to screw up. There is value in taking risk. So how do we right. get that message out? I had Austin Peterson on a few weeks ago, and he said our message just isn't sexy. And he had some great ideas about liberty. But you know, when you're talking to somebody and, and they want to see you as gay guy or Jewish guy. Uh -huh. How do you get through to them that that's not what's important? And then how do you sell liberty knowing that they have to be responsible to be to be free? Right. Liberty is difficult uh, because we're so used to the government being involved. We're so used to asking them for permission first. And people struggle to imagine what it would be like. Um, right now, you know, on, on Twitter, what I'm seeing is what will happen if there's no individual mandate? People have forgotten what it was like to simply choose their own health insurance. Now they can't, now they're afraid of what might happen. People are going to um, die. <laughs> yeah, people are going to die. You're taking people's health care away. And I think, um, I think the biggest problem is that people general, generally, in my opinion, in my experience, like the idea of freedom and liberty, but they have no idea how it works in practice. And they don't want people to be hurt. And yeah. the Democrats have convinced everybody that, you need the government to protect people that people the government's responsible to prevent suffering and we have we've had a safety net for our entire lives mm -hmm. where we're, we're, we expect it we're used to it and the de republicans if they take any action at all they're accused of committing genocide and then they always back down oh, so there's yeah. nothing to support no if you're not dedicated political there's nothing yeah. to support no. And, you know, it's like um, they they're on one hand, the Democrats push the idea that we need to limit and control the population. So that's why abortion is a good thing. And then they turn around and say Republicans are going to kill 22 million people. Right. You know, it's, it's all about drama and emotion. And what I think it boils down to is if we can just get this through to people is Democrats think people in general are stupid and they are incapable of taking care of themselves. And so in their smug minds. They think government has to tell people what to do. Right. How do we message right. that? <laughs> That's what I want to tell I people. Know. Democrats think you're stupid. That's why it's not voting for people who think you're stupid because that's what they do. But you know what? The, the fear of being called a racist or a bigot or being mm. accused of hate is more of a motivator. It is. So and I, I have I to ask you a question about trannies. Do what? I have to ask you a question about trannies. 
Okay, ask me a question about trannies. Go ahead. Yeah, because you have been a unique voice in that you have, I think you have advocated on both sides. You've advocated for transgender individuals as individuals who Mm -hmm. deserve respect and who shouldn't be discriminated against. And you've talked about it as the reality, which I'm, I'm assuming in my, my opinion is the mental illness factor. And I really have, I, I really have three opinions about transgender people. Okay. Um, I have experience as a transgender person. I've talked about that a lot before. I understand gender dysphoria. I, I, I'm okay with old school trans. So the people that decided for whatever reason that they were, they were the other gender, uh, the other sex, they, went through the therapy, they lived a year, they got the surgery, they Mm -hmm. changed their name legally, they moved into life. Those people, I have absolutely no problem using their, using the other pronoun. They Mm -hmm. should be able to do everything that the other gender does. They, they're physically the other gender, even though I don't agree with it. Sure. I don't see why they should be harmed in any way or they should be denied anything. Okay. I agree. Um, The new trans (laughs) that has decided that trans woman is now a new kind of person, for example, that demand that they were always the other gender, that demand that, you know. So I the third really about this is that I mentioned on Twitter that gender nonconformity, um, mm-hmm. people who cross-dress, people who incorporate both masculine and feminine qualities, you know, Lafayette from uh, True Blood, that kind yeah. of personality. Sure. That's a unique personality. It's an interesting personality. I don't see any problem with that. Okay. What I have a problem with is forcing science and medical science to state that if a person believes they are the other gender, they are the other gender, and that they deserve medical treatment. Um, Chelsea Manning um, said that without medical treatment, transgenderism is fatal. Um, <laughs> that, you know, sorry. And, and so, so here I am. Here I am with the military thing of saying, if a person is possibly going to kill themselves because someone uses the wrong pronoun, how are they going to handle PTSD? Why, why are we going to put them in that situation? Oh, and I, I think that's a really good uh, point. And I talked about a little bit earlier, and thank um, you for, for holding me accountable for what I talk about because it's a good thing. Um, in my mind, all I saw was the idea of this group of people is X, and so X can't be in the military anymore. And right. I freaked out, and I and it, it was probably back to my advocacy days, in that thinking that anybody can do what they want to do if they work hard enough. I, I'm a big proponent of that, and so I right. got freaked out that we were discriminating against this group of people. Right. And then I talked to a bunch of military folks, and they're like, you know, Sam, it's not about that. It's just you know, it's just mental illness. It's mental illness. What happens if this person can't deal with the stress of the situation and they hurt people? And right. then I started clicking. So I, I think to you break it down really smart. You say, hey, these people who have gone through the therapy, who've had surgery, who've changed their names, they are living as a transgender. I, I think there is something to be said for people who literally changed their lives. And I, right. I agree that I, I really believe that we should allow in that individual liberty that we support and respect those decisions. But like exactly. the, the people, the, the dumbasses who are trying to tell me that men have periods. No, well, crap. Right. They do not have periods. You have to have a freaking uterus to have a period, and men don't have uterus. Those people make right. me insane. And they're the ones who are going to get triggered and freak out about what Trump did or, or what he's talking about doing. The people who live the life aren't the ones uh-huh. freaking out on Twitter. They're right. the ones We've who had- are like, I get it, you know. <laughs> it's like yeah, we we've had transgender people in our society for decades, but and we've never we didn't have a problem until 2015 when when we started having these silly bathroom wars, and that's that's what I don't want. I don't want a person who's so where I'm torn is, you go through all that, you make that adult decision. I don't like I don't like it happening to children. I think that's child abuse, but it is having adults are choosing yeah. that. You're competent. You can pass a psychological test. You can physically pass the test. I don't know why you shouldn't be allowed in the military. What I don't want, though, is just somebody who says, I am transgender or I'm a woman. And then they go into the gender segregated areas. They are physically still male. They start demanding special treatment every time they're treated as everyone else. They interpret it as being discriminated against their mental illness because they are mentally unstable about their condition gets in the way in people's lives are put in risk. 
And that's I, what concerns me. But I think you said it really well because, and I, I'm the first to admit that I am dramatic. I react, and I did react when I saw that. And again, even even admit that I saw Trump do it, and it freaked me out worse. So I mean, I understand that um, I, I am who I am. But it was really good experience for me because I got kind of sniffy with people, but then I started listening to people. And the way you break it down right now, what you just said, makes the most sense to me. And that, you know, we don't have to hurt people who are truly tr transgender people, but we shouldn't right. allow those using that to push some kind of narrative to do harm to that group of people. And they really are by pretending they're the ones who should be speaking for that movement. They are doing more right. damage than anybody. Exactly. And, and there's honestly just the reality. Um, I tweeted out a list earlier from the military of conditions and physical characteristics that block you from entry. Oh, yeah. um, everything from facial piercings to, you know, certain tattoos to asthma, being HIV positive, things like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just a reality that if, if you force your body to mimic the gender, you have to use a lot of medical intervention. And I, I, it's just it's just like insulin. If you need hormone therapy daily to function, if you need psychological drugs to function, if you need to have this constant medical treatment, then you're not fit for the military. It's not a no. it's not a judgment on your character, but it is a reality of the military. And the reality is that that's possible. That being transgender means you're currently with our current medication, our medical world, that you're physically unfit. Yeah. But they're turning it into an issue of, like you're saying, like it's a change for the wall. It's bigotry, yeah, bigotry. is what they're saying. And, you know, my, my fear was that I felt like we were discriminating. And I don't, exactly. I hate the idea of saying, well, this group has this trait, so screw them. And so I panicked. But, you know, but you, yeah. you break it down and you say, here are the reasons why. And it stops being bigotry and it stops just being reality. Right. And I agree. I, and you're you're smart about that, but you knew that, dude. You've been on with. I have to let you go here soon. Are you oh. kidding? You just got on here. I feel like you know. <laughs> and and I I'm not just being nice to you because I'm I'm not nice, but I have to tell you, you are one of my favorite timelines to read. You always make me think. I need to have you back on the show to talk about pro life because I think that story. Oh, yeah is fascinating and i love when you tell that story and i don't have time for you to tell it now because we yeah okay. too much <laughs> tell people how they find you uh chad felix green.com um and or just type my name at amazon you can see all the wonderful things i've written go read his books. Way, you want to, but... buy his books he won't say it but i will <laughs> his books are awesome he thinks so i'm sorry but you do you think differently and those ideas make other people think. So get out there and read him. He is on Twitter at, at Chad Felix Green. He's also all over my timelines. If you see me, you probably see him. Chad, you were <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad you came on. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Absolutely. Thank you, too. And then I guess I will see you in the Twitter sphere. Okay. Stay out of trouble. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I adore him so much. And seriously, guys, if you get a chance, go out to Amazon, um, read his books, look at his books. They are worth a read. He is a smart cat. Guys, I got to tell you, next week I will be on vacation in New York City. So I will not be here, but Patriot Musket is taking over for me, and he will be here live on KLRNRadio.com doing the show. He's even going to do his own douchebag list. So that should be interesting. He has also promised me he will wear red lipstick and a red wig because he thinks I'm ginger, which, you know, I'm truly not. So I will not be here next week, but I will be here the week after. And I'm going to be interviewing Barack Obama when I come back. This is true. I know you guys don't believe me, but he's going to call in and we're going to chit chat on August 9th. So on that note, again, I'm out next week. I'm back the 9th. Um, make sure you stick around for grouchy he's on next with the conservative curmudgeon then we've got jamie at nine and then we have uh stafford's on night 10 and stafford is usually not on so you should stick around and listen to all of them they are kick-ass shows as everything is on klrn radio i'm out of here i will see you in the twitter sphere take care and talk to you in two weeks Bye bye You know why, thug them, hug them, love them, leave them, but I don't trust or need them. Take them out the hood, keep them looking good, with diamond cuts that'll freeze them. First time they fuss, I'm breezing. Talk about what's the reasons. I'm a pimpin' every sense in the word, my mind. Better trust and believe them.